Thank you. Um, hello. My name is uh, Milana Vučković. I work at ECMWF together with, uh, with James. We are actually in, a, in the same team. But I will talk here about um, something else. So I will talk about our medium range weather forecast. So um, I come from ECMWF, which is the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast. And for those who were not at uh, James's talk, just a few words. So we are intergovernmental organizations uh, uh, that has 35 uh, member and cooperating states. We are 24-7 operational uh, service. We, we run the um, weather, uh, weather forecast four times a day. We also support uh, national weather services and uh, businesses. So we have, um, we run our forecast on our supercomputer and we also support our member states running their uh, regional models, for example, on our supercomputer, or there are downstream applications on our uh, cloud. We are also a institu uh, research institution, and uh, we, uh, our research department works on development of our model, but we also collaborate with many uh, European and world um, institutions and uh, uh, universities. We all, uh, operate two Copernicus services, climate, uh, Copernicus climate change service and uh, atmosphere monitoring service, as well support the Copernicus management service. We are also involved in uh, Destination Earth since the beginning of this year, together with UMATSAT and ESA, to produce the digital twins of the Earth. And also we, uh, we participate in many, many uh, European Horizon, 20, Horizon projects, uh, on um, the development of our model, or the, um, improving the infrastructure that where, we, where we run the data, helping uh, other institutions use their data and similar things. I only put a few um, projects uh, here. So what I'm going to talk about is uh, about our transition uh, from the closed system, closed data, to the open data. Until very recently, only our software was open source. Everything else was closed. Our model is closed. Our data was our output of our data is uh, of our model was closed. But we are slowly transitioning to open open data, and uh, everything open. So few, two, day, two two years ago, we made our web charts open and um, our. Uh, archive data open. This year, we also started the production of um, open real-time uh, weather forecast. And it, it includes medium forecast and long-range weather forecast. And to make this data more accessible to our new users that will discover it is an open data, we are doing a little bit more than just opening data. We, are we have designed a very easy to use Python API to easily download the data, and also new Python libraries to process and visualize the data. Together with this, we are developing a set of Jupyter notebooks that will showcase these new libraries, as well as uh, pr uh, show the data to, to the new users. Uh, so uh, what is our weather forecast data? Uh, we produce medium range weather forecast, which we run uh, four times a day. It is the f uh, forecast up to two weeks in advance, and we run it at uh, noon and uh, midnight, as well as 6, and 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., and it is on a bit higher resolution. And as, uh, once a week, twice a week, we run extended range forecast, which is six weeks in advance, and uh, once a month, we run long range forecast, which is seven months in, uh, in, in the future. And subset of, this, of all of this data is now, since uh, January this year, open. And it is uh, subject to Creative Commons license and uh, available on our servers and on um, Microsoft Azure servers. Um, it, this open, op, free open um, real-time data set con, uh, consists of all our ensemble members at a lower resolution. So our uh, high resolution and ensemble data is uh, available at resolution at 0 0.5, so around 9 kilometers, and this is at 0 0.4. It is available of, uh, at nine vertical levels, four rounds a day, forecast up, up to 10 uh, or 15 days, and more, our most popular uh, Parameters are here uh, involved, such as temperature, wind, precipitation, and uh, many more. 
um, open charts are our static weather, uh, static uh, forecast maps, which have been open since um, October 2020. Before October, even all of these static maps were uh, subject to a license. And um, they, con they have over uh, 200 different products. They have uh, high resolution uh, forecast, ensemble forecast, short, uh, medium range, long range forecast. And the, uh, all of these products are based on our Easy Charts plat platform, which is still closed to registered users, but and it is it is interactive uh, platform based on um, open layers, for example. More about Easy Charts and how this is generated, you can hear tomorrow at uh, Chihan's talk um, in at, uh, at twelve thirty, just before lunch. Um, so what what uh, happened when we opened the charts and the data is that many users asked us, oh, uh, how do we reproduce this, uh, these charts? These users uh, are not used to our data that is in GRIP format or NetCDF. Uh, they are not used to our specific meteorological libraries. So we came with a solution to make a um, Jupyter notebook for each of these products that will have, that will explain which data is used, where to find the data, how to download it, which will provide all the calculations that were uh, needed to get from raw data to the calculated product, and also to show how to plot this data. Uh, what was our challenge with doing this? Well, was the challenge to make 240 notebooks for 240 products? No, because most of this work on actually making these uh, notebooks can be automated, because the, the information about all of these um, what, what the data is in inside, how is, uh, how is it calculated, can be, get from, uh, can go, uh, can be gotten from ECHS database. Then templates can be made, and then Jupyter notebooks can be made. But what the challenge is, is actually all the undocumented un uh, uh, production of products, because some of our products are produced by, <laughs> still by Fortran, some um, are, many of them are very old, so these products need to be even redone before the notebooks um, can, be, can be made. And also these notebooks will then serve as a sort of a documentation for all of these uh, products. Well, if this was the only work that would be boring, so in the, during this, the, this work, so all of these products are made by our, by our own uh, libraries for processing uh, visualizing data. One of these libraries is Matthew and Magix for visualization. And these, this uh, Matthew is a great tool. It, is, it has a Python API. It, is, um, it has a graphical user interface, but it is uh, monolithic and gi gigantic because it has uh, man, uh, it, it, it serves to download, to process the data, to visualize, to download many types of data. So what we wanted to do is to split this into smaller libraries that will do just one thing and be much more simpler and much more uh, near to the uh, Python ecosystem. So the uh, API of new libraries will be similar to the API of other Python libraries uh, used for processing the data. So, these, so uh, for this, first library to download the uh, open data called ECMWF open data is a simple Python API which uh, to use to download the open data, cut, uh, open data, data set. And it, uh, its API is very similar to our other APIs to get to the data. So it is easy for existing users to to start using it or for new users to find the even documentation from the old APIs just to uh, use this one. And it is also similar to the um, uh, CDS API. Uh, also, this uh, open data can be downloaded using uh, wget and curl, but there you would get the whole files. While using this API, you can uh, just choose uh, which uh, subset of the data you want to, to download. Next library is to process the data. It is called ECMWF data. It is one little part of our Matthew library just to um, explore and uh, process the, the grip data. And uh, it, is, it works very well in Jupyter Notebooks. And uh, it can be used to read uh, more, uh, one or more grip file and then to uh, manipulate the, the field sets. 
And the last one is the visualization, uh, visualization library. It is a thin wrapper uh, above our old Magix library, which is more Pythonic and uh, yeah, uh, users from another Python library can, can easily uh, find, find the same around and, um, and use it for plotting. So how did, how did we create this notebook? So we uh, analyzed all the products and then um, categorized them into groups. And then from these groups, uh, depending on what processing is needed or, is it, uh, or the type of visualization, the templates were made. And then each of the, each of the uh, products was, uh, the date, uh, metadata of the product was uh, collected and picked in category in, from which, which templates will be used. The template was modified and tweaked a little, and then it was ready to publish. And then do that for 200 products. Well, uh, to maintain all of these uh, notebooks uh, could be a challenge because these libraries are very new. Maybe it is expected that they will be changed. The, we, have, we will have soon new libraries for post-processing and there is over 20, 200 notebooks that need to be maintained. Like, uh, so maintaining of the notebooks has to be easy. Change, changes in all of them has to be easy. Luckily, the notebooks are just JSON files and it, they are very easy to manip manipulate using Python and it's, uh, it is actually not so big, big work to, to update them. In uh, all of them at once. So, how can you find these uh, notebooks? Not so easy. Um, on our website, if you go to ecnwf.int, you can find the forecast link or direct link to the forecast. You will see something like uh, on, on this side and the notebooks who, for now, have the uh, the products who have, which have notebooks have the little Jupyter link, uh, Jupyter icon, but this icon is not a link to the notebook. This is just a, a picture that there is a notebook. Also, all of the notebooks live at, the, at GitHub. So if you click on a notebook or on a, on a thumbnail, you would get the, the product, and then clicking on this export link will open the next uh, image with the notebook, and then the pop-up will come and ask you where do you want to run your notebook. You can see it on a GitHub or launch bind binder in, or in Colab, whichever you prefer to use. So can this work be applied somewhere else? Well, of course it can. It, it, can, be, um, it, be, it can be added to any portal that serves the data to help the users uh, actually explore the data and um, see, see, see if they can work with it. One, of, uh, one portal like that is um, in the Highlander project, uh, which is a European ho Horizon uh, project uh, about using supercomputer to, to, to process the data, satellite data, forecast data, or Internet of Things data to uh, b uh, prepare for the, uh, for the climate change. It has 10 partners. It's a three-year three year long project, and it has uh, 10 partners. It's led by Chineka Supercomputing Center, and whoever is local here will might notice that all of these partners, except the CMWF, are Italian. Uh, and it has a very nice portal, but uh, ECMWF role in this project is to uh, provide uh, new post-processing products uh, for era 5 reanalysis and extended range forecast. And these projects, these products are very new and these users are very new. So for them, it might be a little, they might need a little help to start using this data. And this is why in this project as well, we are um, developing notebooks to help users uh, with, with this data. And if there is time in the project, then for other partners' data, we might develop as, uh, notebooks as well. And uh, I'm almost uh, at the end here. You can see a little bit about, about the project. Uh, and with that, I'm, I thank you for the attention. And if there's any questions. <laughs>